I'm hoping to inspire you today with some fall projects, with some easy, simple changes that you can make to your thrifted or everyday decor. Hubby and I went thrifting the other day and I found this at Goodwill. This is a checkered past from 1997 checkerboard decor. So it says welcome on the bottom, your board, and then your pieces that are tied on, which looks really cute, but it's got the grapes on the top and I'm not a huge fan. So what I was gonna do, if it looks okay, I could sell it the way it is because this is gonna be for resale. I'd love to keep it for myself, but um, we're in the business to resell. So I have this piece of wallpaper border, this whole roll of wallpaper border, I just picked up the other day. So they weren't done on the same day, but I picked it up and I thought I love the sunflowers, anything sunflowers. And I thought if I cut off this bottom border area where it's got the blues and the burgundies and all that, and just had this up here, I think the greens would pull the green out of the board and then the blacks of course all the different colors and the background is the same color background as in the crackle of the board which is really good i really love the crackle the only thing it's not going to have is the crackle but i think this is going to make it more um current as far as the um you know the grapes are just they, i feel like they just don't belong on there I don't, I don't really care for it. So I'm going to cut this off. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to just go all the way over here. I want sun, some of the sunflowers to be in it as much as possible. See what we can get in there. We can go down a little bit. It's not a very big space, but I definitely want the sunflowers to be in it. And definitely get as much of the green in there so that it will will look good. So let me get this cut off. Oh, and also this was $10 at the Goodwill. So that was, I paid up for that. That's pretty, pretty uh, expensive little piece, but I think that um, it'll be okay. I'll get my money back out of it, I believe. I'm just gonna cut that little bit off because I think it clashes with the colors. I'm trim this down just a bit. Make sure I didn't cut too much off. Okay, I think that's gonna be cute. Okay, I cut it down exact before I glue it in. And I am going to glue it with Mod Podge. This is um, pre-pasted wallpaper, but I find that it doesn't stick as well. And I want it to stick. So we're gonna add Mod Podge to the bottom so that it will stick and hold. Okay, and because I have it cut exact, pretty much for the most part, I can just slip it right in there and move it down where I need it. There we go. It's in there, just making sure all the bubbles are out, all the air pockets. And it's flat and there we go I think this is a little more updated and it just looks so cute with the colors everything works out really good I think 
to tone down some of the brightness on this, I think I'm going to just take some antique wax and just go over this whole piece and see if I can tone down some of that bright background. It, it looks good, but it stands out quite a bit. that and then let's wipe it back oh there much better I think much better tones that down so it's not so bright. Let's see, where is the roll? Hang on. I wanted to show you the difference in the antique wax, what it did. Can you see the difference between the two? Toned it down quite a bit so it's not such a bright white. And I think that helps a lot. I actually could do this whole thing like that. Let's try that, let's see. Let's just do the whole thing. This is how I get in trouble. Because I think I'm just gonna do one thing and then I start with something else. And So let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah. Oh, you can definitely see the difference. Up there and down here I think that looks excellent and the two go a lot better together might as well just make it all cohesive I love that antique wax oh yeah Fantabulous. That looks good. I wanted to show you one of my newest items in my Etsy shop. It is a new craft kit that my husband and I put together. It's handmade by us and put together. It is a crow fall craft kit with paint that you can paint your crow. It has some wax so you can give him a nice waxy finish and give him a rich, rich look. It also is great for the stand and the, the dowels that it sits on. And you can put them all together. It's got glue if you want to use it. I, I'm sending some Spanish moss, a rusty star, a piece of twine so that you can tie it right on there. And he is a great little centerpiece for fall or any time of the year, really. He's available on my Etsy shop, and I will have a link down in the description. This next project is a watering can that I've had in my booth for probably since springtime and I thought it would sell it's pretty cute I think it's an LTD one but I really liked it thought it was pretty but it did not sell so I brought it home and I'm going to redo it and give it a dark and moody look with some decoupage paper and a little paint so this is oakum from fusion and I'm just going to give this whole thing uh, two coats of the paint and let it dry So I'm going to use this crow paper from Zazzle. I'll have a link down in the description for you if you're interested in it. I let the can dry and now I'm going to use some Mod Podge so that I can 
glue this on to the can. So I'm just going to do a nice thin coat all over, probably do in sections. It's a little bit easier. So I do a little section and then spray the paper with a little bit of water just to smooth it out. It's pretty wrinkled. This is going to come out pretty wrinkled, spoiler alert anyway, but it's okay because again, it's kind of a fall Halloween decoration and it's going to be dark and moody and I like it being a little bit distressed and worn, so it'll be okay. Of course, working on a rounded piece is very difficult anyway, so you got to do it in sections and just know that it's not going to come out perfect. I'm trying to keep the spout without getting any of the paper on it and the handle. So both of those are going to be the gray color. So we're just going to work around those and work our way all the way around. Once it's all dry, I went back with some sandpaper and sanded off the extra pieces around the bottom. And then I used a razor knife and went around the spout and the handle and around the top. It was a little bit easier to use that than the sandpaper to get off any extra paper that I didn't want on there. I went back over it and sealed it with some Mod Podge and let that dry. After the Mod Podge dried, I'm going to take a little bit more of the oakum on my paintbrush and just go around the edges and kind of tidy up and neaten up those edges just a little bit. It doesn't have to look perfect, but just trying to clean up some of that paper that I couldn't maybe get off. And then once that's dry, I take my sandpaper and give it a light sand, try and get some of those wrinkles just kind of sanded down a little bit and roughed up. It scuffs up the paper, it makes it look older and aged, which is really good because then I'm going to take some antique wax and I'm going to brush it on there and it's going to cover up some of those scratches and scuffs that I put in it and it gives it a really cool old look. I took a little black paint that was on one of my brushes and just went around the edges and gave it a little distress, just the spout and the handle and just to give it some old looking detail that I thought would look really good with the paper to bring out some of the black crows that were in it. I have this grubby candle that will actually, I have a few of them on my Etsy shop that'll be available just as soon as this video comes out, so you can check it out. I'll have a link down in the description. They're three inches wide by six inches tall, so they're really cool, grubby candles. So if you're interested, I'll have them on there. I'm gonna add just a ring of pit berries to the jug and add the candle, and I think this makes a really cool, dark and moody fall piece of decor. So next we want to get out our Easter decor and start working on that. Haha, <laughs> nope, just kidding. We do want to get out our Easter decor in those plastic eggs because we're going to make some really cute decor with this for fall. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have a top and a bottom and I'm going to take the bigger part of the egg, so the bottom, and I'm going to paint it, paint it black, just that top part. And I only do one coat. It doesn't really need two coats on there. I just want to cover it up. I'm going to be using some twine. And I, any, in between the twine, I want to make sure you can't see the different colors of the egg. This project is going to be really great to get rid of some of your scrap pieces of fall colors that you have. Dig those out and just take, take those pieces and just start gluing them to the bottom of your little egg here. I like to go up just where I stopped painting and glue it all the way around. 
So I like to glue all the top edges and then I go around and fold it over and make some really cute little folds that make it look kind of like it's a, a little wrinkle in that bottom part. Just gives it a nice look and gets rid of some of that extra material. And don't worry if the pieces don't totally cover the colors of the bottom of the, of the egg. That's why you have the scraps. You just take another piece of scrap and wrap it around. If you haven't figured out what I'm making already, it is an acorn. And I'm just using the egg upside down to create that shape. So I wrap around whatever I have for material, fall colors, or whatever you have, primitive colors. And then I'm going to take my twine and wrap that around the top. Now I used the smaller twine that I have and I had to go around it twice in order to give it like a nice full look on the top. So you're going to see here I start just below where my material is to cover up that black paint and cover up the edge of the material. So I just barely go on the edge there and go around. This twine is so thin that's why I had to go around it a couple times. I did take some twine rope and or some hemp rope and go around it. It was a little bit bigger and I made some with that. You'll see that in the ending pictures. I don't think I got any video of that but I like the either one really as long as you go around twice with a thinner twine that looks really nice and full and it gives it a really cool look. So as I get to the top, I just go round and round, and on these I'm going to make a little loop at the very top so you can hang them so they could be little tree ornaments or whatever you decide. Uh, I also have some skewers that I took some antique wax to and added those to the top. The one in the plate there has the hemp rope and one of the skewers for the, for the little stem. So you could do it that way as well. This is my second trip around the top of the acorn, my second layer so that I can cover up the spaces where you can see the black in between, but that's why I painted it black. So if you can, it's okay. And I just wanted to make it look thicker and fuller. And I think these came out super, super cute. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop and find out about those grubby candles or even the crow craft kits. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.